the last video, we set up our canvas, manipulated the fill and stroke styles, and created some simple rectangles. Now we're going to create our own polygonal shapes using paths in the canvas. The way we can draw custom shapes under our canvas is called a path. Now, drawing a path is a lot like drawing on a sheet of graph paper. You can pick up your pen and move it to a certain point, and then maybe draw a line or a curve to another point, draw a line again, pick up your pen, move it somewhere else, and maybe draw some other shapes. There's always the idea of where your current position is on the paper, and you can either move to another point by drawing a line or a curve, or you can pick it up and not draw anything and place it on a new point. But every time you create a line, it's always from the last point your pen was on the canvas. So I've set up our canvas code, and it looks a lot like the boilerplate code from our first video. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set a stroke style and a fill style like we did last time. Now to begin a path, we call a method on the context object called begin path. And what this does is it allows us to begin plotting points on our path. And then when we decide we want to go back and fill or stroke it, it'll only fill and stroke the path all the way back to the most recent begin path call. So if we wanted to create different paths, we would have multiple begin path calls. Now generally our pen starts out on the origin of 0, 0, but if we wanted to draw our shape in the middle of our canvas, we would want to pick up and move our pen to the point we want to start our shape. So we call the moveTo method on our context, and this takes an x and a y value that are in pixels. So we haven't created any path, we've just indicated where we'd like to start our path. Now just like the moveTo method, the lineTo method will go from the previous point, in our case 300 and 200, and move to a new point, here being 400 and 200. So it'll be moving to the right. Now this does create a path, but it doesn't create any pixels on the screen. It's creating a path in memory that later we'll be able to either fill or stroke. So we can make another line to call, this time moving down the canvas. And if we wanted to make a triangle, we can make another line to, to 300, 200, which you'll remember is where our shape started. So this would create a triangle. So now we've created a path by calling begin path and multiple line to and move to calls. So if we were to save it out and view it in our browser, we would see nothing. Now just because we've created a path doesn't mean we'll see anything on our screen. We have to either stroke or fill it. Now as you might have guessed, there is a context.stroke method. And this will take the most recent path and it'll apply a stroke to it. And it'll be based on the stroke style here. And let's go ahead and save it out. And if we refresh, we can now see that we've created a triangle. So you can see we picked up our pen, moved to this point, drew a line to this point, drew a line to this point, and drew a line to this point. Now if we wanted to create a closed shape, this actual line here, we don't have to do a line to. We can instead use a special method called close path. And what close path will do is it will create a line from the most recent pen point to the first pen point defined in the path. So it'll move from 400, 300 back to 300 and 200, effectively what we were doing before. Now we could also call context.fill, and it would fill our shape using the fill style we have defined. So you can see now we have a green triangle. So it's a little bit difficult to see the stroke and the fill at the same time, so what I'm going to do is now define another property on our context called the line width. And this sets the width of our stroke. I'm going to make it 10. So if we refresh, we see our stroke is a little more pronounced. Now what happens if you try to fill a path that hasn't been closed? Well, I'm going to comment out our stroke real quick. And I'm also going to comment out our closing path. So now we should just have two line segments, and let's see what goes on. Well, it looks like we have a full shape. Now let's add our stroke back on to see what's really happening. So indeed, there really is only a line from here to here, but when we fill a path, it fills in the space as though it had been closed. So the fill looks the same, but you can see that there's actually not a stroke from this point to this point. Now our shapes can have more than just a few different lines to them, they can actually have any number of lines attached to them, and you can even fill shapes that intersect over themselves. So let's take a look at this piece of code, 
and what we're doing is we're setting the fill style to red and we're beginning a path and then we're going to create a bunch of different random points inside of our canvas and create a line to them from one to the other so we should get a fairly random jagged shape then we're going to close the path and we're going to fill and stroke the shape so let's see what this looks like Let me refresh we can see that we have a shape here and you can see it intersects over itself so you have different points here that are filled in or filled in here and we can refresh and we can see how the different interactions when it crosses over itself will create a fill that is contained properly so far everything we've seen in the canvas has been straight lines and corners in the next video we'll look at the different ways that we can create curves using the canvas